Today we're going to be talking about mixed mole problems and um, what you'll need out for this video um, is you're going to need a periodic table of course, your calculator, and you're also going to need a mole road map. So if you don't have one of those make sure you see Mr. Camp, he'll give you a mole road map as well. Let's dive right in here. So um, what we're going to do here is we are going to take a look at um, mole problems where we can, mole and stoichiometry problems where we can start us anywhere on the mole road and end us anywhere on the mole road um, as long as we know what our starting point and our ending point is. Again, stoichiometry is very, very important because it allows us to predict how much react, how many reactants we need and predict exactly the amount of products we should be getting and we'll be talking about why we don't always get the amount of products later. Just looking really quickly at the mole road map, I'm going to fill some things in here, of course, liters, grams, atoms, molecules, formula units, which should be uh, also filled in on your mole road. And then we talked about before in a previous video where you can go from the mole and kind of go right back to the mole by using the unknown over the known. And those are coefficients from the balanced equation. We call it a mole ratio. And so let's dive right into this problem and uh, identify some, some information. So we're given a balanced equation up here, and that's a good thing, we didn't have to balance it, and sometimes you will have to balance those equations, but this one is already balanced for us. This is, a, this is ethane burning with oxygen forming carbon dioxide and water, and we have 2746 as our coefficients. Let's look at the problem here, example number one. How many moles of oxygen are required to burn 75 liters of ethane gas um, at standard conditions, STP? So STP just again, once again means that we're allowed to use the mole road and not some other formula that we'll talk about later. Let's dive into here. Um, our known quantity here is 75 liters of C2H6. That's our known. That's going to be our starting point on the mole road. Our unknown quantity, let's see how many moles of oxygen. We are looking for moles of oxygen. So what we're going to do is, again, we're going to create a picket fence, make it nice and long. And I'm going to put my known quantity right up here at the top, 75 liters of C2H6. There's my known. Um, and so where do we start on the mole road? We're starting right here at volume. And we're looking to go to moles of oxygen. It says oxygen. Remember, oxygen is O2, moles of O2. So um, there is our ending point right there. So we're starting and ending. Now it's not just a one-step problem. And the reason why it's not a one-step problem is because we do have ethane as our starting point and we have oxygen as our ending point. And anytime you have two different substances, you must go around the unknown over the known. And we're going to use those coefficients in the balance equation, that mole ratio. We've got to go around that. So um, we're going to start at liters. We're going to go down the road to moles. We, have, we see that our conversion factor right there is one mole over 22.4 liters. And then what we're going to do is we now are at moles, but we need to go around the unknown over the known. We need to go around that mole ratio all the way around it back. So we're going to put our unknown on the top, and it's already on the top. It already says moles of O2. That's our unknown. Our known is C2. H6, remember we said up here, that was our known quantity. So we're going to put C2H6 H6 on the bottom, that is moles of that. And then we're just going to use the coefficients from the balance equation. And we look up to the balance equation, the coefficient for, for O2 is 7, and the coefficient for C2H6 is 2. We got that from right there, and we see it right there as well. So now, this just becomes, we're set up and we're ready to just punch this into our calculator. One of the tricks about punching this into our calculator that we have to be aware of is we're, we're going to multiply across the top first. We always multiply first. When we divide, put these in parentheses right here at the bottom. So um, I'm going to do 75 times 7. I'm going to divide it by, and I'm going to open up parentheses and do 22.4 multiplied by 2, close my parentheses, and that's going to give me a very, very large number. Well, that was, actually wasn't that large of a number. Um, it was only 11. Actually, I got 11.7. We're going to round this guy off. We have only two sig figs. 11.7 is going to round off to 12. And so we get 12 moles of O2 as our answer. There we go. You should try that in your calculator. Make sure you're coming up with the same thing I am. Now, 
We're going to scroll down. We have two more example problems where we can uh, once again use the mole row to uh, determine our answers. And so, so we're going to work off the same exact balance equation. We're kind of working a little bit faster this time. Um, and uh, the reason why I'm going to be working faster is we've been through a lot of this stuff already. Okay, there we go. So there's our mole roads already set up for us. We're going to look at our look at our, um, our problem here and see what we have. What mass in grams of water will be produced if 2.4 times 10 to the 24th molecules of oxygen are burned with excess ethane? Now, we said before that if it says excess on something, we're just going to go ahead and ignore that, cross that out, because excess means we have plenty to go around, and we'll never be worried about running out of that. So we're not going to worry about it. We're going to make a pick of fence. And we're going to identify some, some are given or are known. It says we have 2.4 times 10 to the 24th molecules of oxygen. There is our known quantity. And we're going to put that where we always put it. 2.4 times 10 to the 24th molecules of O2. Want to make sure we write out molecules. Do not confuse molecules with moles. They're two different things. And then let's see, what are we looking for? What mass in grams of water? So we are looking for grams of water. So I'm going to put that way out here at the end. I'm going to put grams of water. And there we go. So essentially, um, this, is, this is telling me where to start on our mole road. This is telling me where to end on our mole road. So we're starting with molecules. Molecules are right there. We're ending at grams, and grams are down there. So we have a three-step problem. Why is it a three-step problem? Well, Oxygen is a different compound than water. And so we have to go around the unknown over the known, which we always do for stoichiometry. So let's start by heading down the first down the road, our first step of the journey, and we can see that our conversion factor is one mole over Avogadro's number. So we're gonna do one mole of O2 divided by six point O two times ten to the twenty third molecules of O2. That's taken us our first step of the journey. Second step of the journey, we have to go around the unknown over the known because we have two different substances. And so here's what I do. My trick is my, my known or my unknown quantity is H2O. And I just slide that guy right over and rewrite H2O right here. And then I look at my known. My known is O2. And so I'm going to put that guy on the bottom just like that. And so those are my, those are my coefficients from the balanced equation. And um, so for my coefficients of the balance equation, I have six waters given right here. And for O2, I have seven right there. Okay? Now, last step of our journey on the mole road is we need to go down the road to grams. And it says atomic mass or molar mass over one mole. So I'm going to put one mole on the bottom. And if you ever get confused about, well, which one do I calculate the mass for, O2 or H2, it tells us right here. We have to calculate it for water. We know that water is going to be um, two hydrogens and one oxygen, and we get 18.02. All right, and there we go. Once again, we're going to run this through our calculator, multiply everything across the top in parentheses, divide everything on the bottom in parentheses, and we'll get an answer, and that'll be coming up shortly here. Okay, now we have an answer. We're going to round that answer off to two sig figs. And so the answer that I get is 61.57, so we're going to call that 62. And our, for our units, molecules, molecules cancel, moles, moles cancel, moles, moles cancel, so we're left with grams of H2O. And that's what we were looking for. We were looking for grams of water, so we have 62 grams of water in that problem. Okay, we'll do one more problem here. And uh, let's see where we can go on the mole road from this guy. Um, So I'm um, kind of go through this fast here. Same exact balanced equation. We're doing it three times. We have a known quantity of 25 grams of C2A6 burned with XX oxygen. We do not even want to worry about oxygen. And what volume of CO2 is produced is what we're looking for, OK? Um, remember, volume, once again, is going to be liters. So set up our, set up our uh, picket fence. And we're starting off with 25 grams of C2H6, which means we're starting on the mole road, our first step of our journey, we're starting here, down at grams. 
and we're going to volume of oxygen, so that's going to be liter, or so, I'm sorry, volume of carbon dioxide is what it's saying there, that's liters, so uh, we're going to end our journey right there. C2H6 obviously is a different compound than CO2, so we have to go around the unknown over the known, that mole ratio, and so that'll be our second step of the journey. So let's head up the road this way from grams to moles to start off with. One mole of C2H6 over the molar mass of C2H6, which carbon has a mass of 12.01, and we have two of them, and we're gonna we're gonna add that to uh, six hydrogens, which are 1.01 .01 each, and I get a I get a mass of 30.08 grams, just like that. That has taken us on our first step of the journey. We're now at the mole. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go around the unknown over the known from the balanced equation. So what I do is I take my unknown, which is CO2, and I just re slide it in right here and rewrite it, CO2 right there. I'm going to take my known, which is C2H6, C2H6, write it on the bottom. And now I'm just going to look for coefficients from the balanced equations. Remember those coefficients also equal moles. And so for CO2, I have the coefficient of 4. For C2A6, I have the coefficient of 2. Alrighty, and that takes care of that little journey. And now we're heading up the mole road back to liters to finish our journey off. And we have 22.4 liters over 1 mole of CO2. Okay, again, parentheses, 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 parentheses. Um, real common mistake, many students forget to multiply in, you know, one of these coefficients that are on the bottom. So make sure that you, you keep those in mind because that'll throw the whole problem off if you forget a coefficient on the bottom. So we're going to do 25 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 22.4. We're going to divide that into 30.08 multiplied by 2. And we're going for two sig figs on this calculation based off of our known. And so I'm going to say this is going to be 37. It was 37.23 on my calculator. Um, I'm going to round off the two sig figs, get 37, check units, grams, grams, moles, 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 moles. We're left with an answer in liters. That's what we were after in the first place, liters of CO2. Now you know how to do mixed mole problems, or mixed stoichiometry problems, rather. You can go anywhere on the mole road, start anywhere on the mole road, get anywhere on the mole road, as long as you know where to start and know where to end. Very useful thing to do in chemistry.